I'm glad you could be here for this male and female portrait and beauty lighting session that we've got lined up for you. I've got my lovely model Evie and lovely model Dave tonight as well. So I'm going to show you a number of different lighting scenarios for male, for female. Few little tips thrown in there for you as well. As usual, we'll have our live Q&A feature so you can ask me questions as I'm working along. There we've got Emma who's filled in Q&A. There she is, look at her, look, there she is. Look how excited she is about this session. There's Emma on the help desk. There's Ben, our video mixer guy. He's just loving it. He's going crazy, he's going crazy. I've got a plain gray wall. So you can imagine just this could be, this could be a paper background. And I've actually put my roll of gray paper, my background roll, as you can see here, I've put it on the floor. So I've got a couple of props here. Here's what I've decided I'm gonna use. I've got this old rustic looking chair here, which I'm gonna use as a prop. And then these are from various shoots that I use for whiskey shoots, product shoots, different surfaces. This stuff, I go and pick it up from uh, secondhand stores. Cost 10 pounds, that's about $12. What, I, what I've thought about is in my mind, what do I want to create? So I've kind of visualized a picture in my brain of a darkish sort of set, which is why I've gone for the gray and the gray. And um, this rustic chair, and potentially some sort of rustic table here to give it a bit of presence. And then my model looking all sullen and moody on the chair, uh, different poses, with a sort of high contrast light on him in this area. Um, you come in, Dave, just sit yourself down on that chair, please. Now, my first choice of softbox that I want to try is an Octobox 75. Now, the reason I want to go for an Octobox 75 is because it's not too big, it's not too small, but um, I should be able to get a fairly good contrast on Dave. He's got a black suit, it's going to be all dark. If I use a really big softbox, then I'm going to get a lot of light spread, spreading around my set and onto my background and down into areas that I don't want. By using a smaller softbox, I can control that light a little bit more. It's roughly the right angle. This is, kind of, this is kind of nice, this is what I was thinking of. I'm getting some nice tone, shadows here, strong shadows here. And with male portraits, you can be a lot more aggressive with your lighting than you can with female portraits because it doesn't matter if you get a bit of character and a bit of uh, you know, texture and uh, uh, wrinkles and stuff like that. I'm gonna start with the light quite side on, quite harsh position, but it's a small enough softbox that I hopefully won't get too much spread or as much spread as I would get with a bigger softbox. Obviously you guys fire the questions in. Emma will be able to pass those questions over to me as we go along, so. Okay, yeah, we've got a couple of questions that have come in. Um, we've got Peter here who's asking what brand the C-Stand is. Uh, Avenger. Avenger. Avenger C-Stands which are made by, which are owned by Manfrotto. And if you are obviously a member on our website, you can uh, get, 15% uh, off Avenger stands on Manfrotto's website using our discount code that you can, uh, you can use. And we're going to take the first test on the first light with the flash. And as I say, I've got no idea if the power setting for the flash is correct or not. We're zoomed in there. I've just got, that's not bad actually. We've got the power at power five on the flash. And we can see that actually the exposure on the skin and stuff looks really good. We've got a nice shadow depth and everything else. Now, as I said, the problem for the, the, with the shot for me is that it's just, there's nothing there. It's just Dave sat on a chair. So my idea was, um, as I don't have a table, I'm going to bring a table in. Now, as you can see, this as a table will be completely useless for a shot like this because this is a piece of Ikea furniture and it looks totally out of kilter with, with this chair, with Dave's suit and everything else. You know, this is too modern. So my idea is that I'm going to disguise this with my uh, tabletops. And that's why I say, I haven't got room in my store to keep lots and lots of different tables, but I have got room to keep tabletops. So I'm gonna just bring that out to there. That sorts out the surface, but I've still got the front face here. So. I need, to, I, need to, I need to sort this front face out. So now, 
very simply have created what looks like a big bold wooden desk as a prop by just using two pieces of wood. Okay, so let's take our second shot. So now, in this result, we got something there, you see? Now look at the, how the shots change dramatically because of that. We've got this sort of strength to the shot now because I've introduced another angle coming in and that angle is running towards Dave. It's pointing towards him and there's a bit of texture there. There's a bit of substance there. It's, it's, it's solid, you know? Now, as it is at the moment, if we look at Dave's face, it's probably too much in the shadow on that side. So what I'm going to do, Dave, is I'm going to ask you to angle your head this way a little bit. So I want you staring sort of into space over here as if you're sort of deep in thought, a little bit sad, a little bit sullen. Okay, let's just try that there and let's see if any light, any more light clips onto that side of the face. I'm just going to do a test there. And let's take a look at the next one. There we go. Now there's the difference. You see now by just getting Dave to turn his head slightly, I'm able to get an extra catch light in the eye. If we compare that to the previous shot, there you see we've only got one eye, part of the face. Here now, this is what I was looking for. And what's really good as well is we've got just enough separation of his head from the background. Now let's explain a little bit about that and what's going on. So with this, um, what is this? This is the Octobox 75. With this Octobox 75 at this distance to get this exposure correct, then that's still allowing a little bit of light to fall just a little bit to land and hit over here. If the softbox was closer to him and then the exposure I had to get correct with it's closer to him, then because of the inverse square law, not as much light would be getting here. It would be more underexposed, so it wouldn't work as well. If the light was further away from him and the exposure was correct for him here, then this would also be lighter, okay? And now I'm gonna show you how I can control the atmosphere in the shot. Because, you know, what we've got going on there, in 10 minutes, I've got a really bold, strong male portrait that could be a Cartier ad, it could be a, a suit ad, and it's been done with one simple Octobox 75 and using two bits of old junk from an antiques or from a second-hand store. I'd like to see more texture on this table. We've got this lovely wooden surface. So I'm just grazing. Can you see that? I'm just grazing this piece of wood because I want to see a bit of that wood texture on there. I'm just grazing it. And what I've got on here is I've just got a tight, very tight grid here on a standard reflector. And without the grid, that's what you get. With the grid on, then I'm able to concentrate that beam, keep it off of Dave, keep it just on the wood. I'm glancing it across because this is texture. If I put it front on, I'm just gonna have a ball of light, but I wanna graze it because I wanna see a little bit of texture. I don't wanna see too much, I just want a little subtle hint. Now we'll do the shot again with the Octobox in there as well. Let's have a look at the result there. There we go, right, now you see that little streak of light across that wooden texture, let's zoom in on that. There you go, we've got some nice wooden texture revealed there and it's just carefully controlled by using a grid. The floor is too bright, okay? I don't want to see so much detail on the floor. So what I want you to do, we're going to just take a piece of black card. Yep. And I just want you to hold that black card roughly about there. Okay. We're just making a bit of a shadow so that the light coming out of this softbox let me put it back on full. So the light coming out of this soft box, you can see there how much is hitting the floor, and now I can shield a bit. So that'll shield a bit from the floor, but it won't affect Dave too much. It'll affect him a little bit, but not too much. So that's roughly where we're gonna go with it, okay? Let me turn that modeling light back down low. Let's take a test shot. And let's see if that shields a bit of light from the floor. Okay, you can move that out, Emma, now. There you go. Right, so now look at the difference. How much light, you can actually see the uh, flag that we put in poking into the shot there.
but it's not a real problem because we could easily get rid of that little strip of light. Let's just flick between the two shots. There was without the flag and there's with the flag. And yet we haven't really affected Dave's face at all. If we look at Dave's face here, there's the shot before and there's the new one. The exposure on Dave's face is pretty much the same, okay? So we've created a really strong male portrait with an old chair, two old pieces of wood, gray paper roll on the floor, gray paper, uh, gray background. Uh, and we built that shot up from nothing. I didn't even know what I was gonna shoot. And I gotta say, I'm, I'm really pleased with that result. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Okay, that is that setup done. I'll take some questions. Dave, pop out there, take a break for a second, mate. Well done. Um, I'm just gonna change things around a little bit for, for, for my next example. Right, Dave, I need you to change, please. Can you go with the black leather jacket, Dave? And I need a tight grid. So I'm gonna find a really tight grid. So I've got the very tightest grid you can get here, which is quite a thick one. Because I need to make a really small beam of light. I just want to try something again. I don't really know. I'm, I, it's a bit of a sort of test here. I've got an idea of what I want to do. Let me explain the idea so you guys can see whether I achieve it or not. I want to put a pool of light on Dave's face that's quite concentrated around here. And I want it to be quite a sharp shadow, harsh light but I want it to fall off away from him and then I'm gonna have one background light. So again, it should be a two light setup. And because he's a male, I'm, I can get away with this harsher light. That's it. Right, I want you to turn that way for me, okay? Put your hands in your trouser pockets or wherever you feel comfortable. I'm gonna turn this collar up. Just gonna get us a little bit of a cooler look going. I'm gonna just put a little ball of light on you there. So just sort of that angle Maybe put your eyes, keep your head where, keep your head where it was. Uh, just straighten that around back to there, that's it. Just your eyes, follow my hand there, okay? Just follow, yeah, I think it might be somewhere around there, okay? Yeah. So I'm just gonna take a look at this. Now, if you look at Dave's face at the moment, you see I've got this light with this very tight grid, very close to him, and I'm just seeing where I can feather this light. So I'm just bending this around a little bit to create, I, I wanna make his forehead in a bit of shadow and just have this light feather onto the face. You see this really tight grid, tight ball of light, and you see how it's not hitting the top of Dave's head because I can angle it to get it to hit up there and it'll make more of the jaw go in shadow, but this time I just wanna see if I can highlight the jaw and we'll have a strong shadow line from the way the light is being cast. We just have a catch up, but this bit up here should just be going into into shadow uh, a little bit. So it's, it's quite an unusual choice here, but I just want to experiment with something. This is going to be the background light, but I'm turning that off at the moment. So we're going to leave that. I'm just going to start with my test. Just going to check my exposure first of all. First test shot here, just to gauge the exposure. Miles overexposed, okay? Miles overexposed. As you noticed, I did not use a light meter. I don't really care. I can see it's overexposed. So I'm gonna whip four, three stops actually out of it to start with, just to take a test. Three stops lower. Just checking my settings, we're still at two. Oh, I know why it's overexposed, because the modeling lamp is also uh, shining quite brightly on Dave there at the moment as well. But I'm just gonna leave that because I need to see where the light is going. Right, you stay there, mate. Okay, so now we can see my exposure is about right, okay? But you see, because I've got such a tight ball of light, it's only Dave's face that is illuminated. But that's fine, because I'm gonna separate Dave now with the glow on my background, okay? Obviously, I need separation. I've gotta separate Dave uh, because he's just his head at the moment. And I'm going to change this modifier so that, look, because with this ball of light from this, it will be quite a tight ball and I want a softer spread. So a soft box is gonna give me a softer spread. Let's put that on. Now we can pop that down here behind Dave. So I'm hoping to see a bit of a glow emanating up behind Dave. That's it. Now I can just see my soft box in the background. 
which is a little bit of a problem, but let's just see what it does with the glow. There we go. Look at that glow coming up behind Dave now. So now he doesn't look like a floating head anymore. Now we've got a bit of a glow coming around behind him. It's not quite enough. And the light on him is a little bit bright, I think, on the face. So I'm going to drop the one down on, on his face a little bit. And I'm going to take this one up in power, a stop. Okay, let's have a look at this one. There, okay, now we're, now we're talking. Because now we can see that Dave's hair is separated from the background, okay? And I think a, a hair edge light would be quite nice as well. But I'm going to bounce a light into the wall to create a bit of an edge glow on Dave here. And I'm just aiming it at the wall there. Now, it could be a, a, a white poly board closer if you wanted. It doesn't have to be the side of the studio wall. There I can see now there is a huge amount of light coming in onto the side of Dave's face. I'm just looking from this angle. There I can see that light reflecting in nicely. And that's all just coming because it's bouncing in from behind. And let's have another go. Focus, look at me, Dave. That's it. Good. And let's see, we should be getting some light coming in onto him now. There we go. Okay, so you can see now how just that fill light there, look, look at the difference now. So I've got still a concentrated ball of light on Dave's face, but I've got the fill light coming in from uh, bouncing off the wall. We can enhance this one with a hair light because the hair is very dark. It's not getting hit with any light. Um, okay, so we've got a question here from Jeff who's asking, can you move the light to the other side maybe so the light is against the backside? I think he's saying the light on the floor, would it be better if it's angled that way so you get more light on the wall behind What, the Dave? angle it's going across the wall? Yeah. Um, we can try that in a second. I'll have a look whether I agree with him or yeah. not. Right, let's have a look at what those uh, people were commenting about in terms of the background light on whether it comes in from the other side. I think they're saying if you put it behind Dave, so it's sort of going left up the wall, mm -hmm. in the top left corner, you might get that ball of light further behind his actual shoulder in the shot. Well, yeah, you would. I mean, it would go further uh, to the right, but I mean, whether or not that's a good or bad thing just depends on personal taste. If I slide the light over further that way, it will make more of it on that side. Or if I brought it in from this angle, it, it would be more brighter on the right hand side. Um, but, you know, it's really down to personal preference. Mm. Let's check this hair light out now. We're going to just do a test. Just get my focus position. I don't know if the hair light's too bright or too strong or too dull. There we go, it's too bright. Take it down. I'm going to take it down to 3.5 because I want that one just a little bit more subtle. One last one that should be about right for this. There we go. Let's have a look if we're in the ballpark now. There we go. That's, that's looking pretty good. So we've got quite a dramatic male portrait, a little bit sort of representative of those sort of old cinema style portraits um, that used to get in the movie stars. Now I look at it, I think that the background light is too bright. So I'm going to take it down a little bit to make it a bit more moody. I think the fill light might be a little bit too bright. I'm going to take half a stop off the fill light. I'm going to take a little bit more up on the main light. And I'm going to take a little bit off the hair light. And pop that hair light back in position there. All right, let's just see those modifications I made from that last shot with these adjustments. That's better. Okay, so if we go back to where we were, we were at that. And I think when I look at that, when I reassessed it, the background light was overpowering compared to the main hero of the shot, which is our model or our subject. Here, I've turned him back into the hero. So it, there's more drama, more mystery in it, um, and it's got more presence than that one. Okay, right, Dave, go take a break, mate. That's you done for the moment.
think we're going to move on to EV next.